You can give me somebody who's much more articulate than myself, much more articulate than anybody else, and we'll blow them away. I can take somebody who's got more belief and blow them away from the front of the room. Because it is that power of belief that what you're saying has some kind of meaning that has an impact on somebody's life that gives you that spark that gets through to other human beings. So I don't necessarily think about what I'm even going to say or how I'm going to say it a lot of times. What I know is I know what it is I have to get across and I make it so important inside of me that there's, I just know it will come across. And I'm not worried about this word or that word. I don't have all that editing going on. As a result, I can stay with my audience. But inside my head, and I'm going, oh my gosh, am I doing this right? Is this coming across well? Once you start doing that, you're in trouble. So the core belief you've got to realize is you can't fail from the front of the room. That's one core belief. The other core belief is that if you've got a strong enough reason, all that matters is that you get the message across. If you do that, you're going to become articulate at times anyway, and people remember those things. When you weren't so articulate, they're not going to remember, they're going to remember your passion, they're going to remember your power. So you know, the biggest challenge, I think, in public speaking is somebody who's like trying to say the, just the right word at the right time. Because then what happens is they go, which one, internal or external? Interim. I have no internal dialogue when I'm speaking effectively. Zero. That is my power. I am totally in uptime. I'm outside here. Now, I can't pause for a moment if somebody's writing the notes down. That's when I might pop in my head for a second and think of something. I see you writing your notes. Boom, you're off for a second. I might go grab inside my head for a moment. But 90% of the time, I'm out here with no internal dialogue at all. And when I'm in trouble, quote unquote, like when I feel like I haven't done a great job, other people say, oh, you're doing a great job inside me when I'm not satisfied. It's because I don't have that same spark or power, and it's because part of me was inside here. Something's going on, and I start talking to myself. As soon as I start talking to myself, it's over. What I do is I see, feel, and it goes. Right? It's an instantaneous thing that comes out of me, but it starts with that core belief. So you've got to learn to adopt that. So how do you adopt the belief that's going to support you? Remember, we said the way to get a belief is you've got this table, and the way to make sure the table feels solid is you've got to get some what? Some legs, which are called what? References. There's one on references. References. Okay? And we want to get as many of those as possible, and that's what you're going to do through skill notes. We're going to get you up with small groups of people, right? About 40 people, and give you a chance to do something over and over and over and over again. And that's also how you get good at something. Right? You don't just do it one time. You know, stuff that I'm doing in certification is sometimes the very first time I've done it, so it may not be as elegant as if I do a mind rev. Mind rev is wired. Right? I mean, I have to think wired because I've done it enough times. But I know what I'm going to say. I don't think about what I'm going to say. I focus on how I'm going to say it. So it certainly may not be as wired as far as that's concerned. But what I make up for in not having clear what I'm going to say exactly or how I'm going to put it across or maybe the funniest way to do it, I make up for that with intention and intensity and knowing how important it is when I'm sharing with someone. So you've got to come from that place. If you didn't do anything else but really adopt that belief that you can persuade anyone because what you're sharing is important to you and you know it's important to them. If you can come from that place, there's very few limits that you can have. The other belief that you might want to adopt, that's still part of number one, is that people want to listen to you. See, if, if you get up there and you're thinking, gosh, I don't know, uh, you know what if they don't listen? What if, what if you know, they don't pay attention to me? If you have that thought in your mind, first of all, you're internal, you're not external. Second of all, you're going to project that. You're going to be tentative, you're not going to have the same power. When I walk in a room, I'm thinking, I am powerful, that's my belief, before I walk in there. I am effective, I know these people want to hear what I have to say. And I've done that in places where they didn't want to hear what I have to say. But I said, I know inside, they may not know it yet, but they need to hear what I have to say, and they're going to want it once they know. Uh, when I worked with Ken Blanchard, one of the things that I did is I modeled some of his strategies, and Ken is one of the most likable people that you'll ever meet. He's like a big, giant, you know, teddy bear, wonderful human being. And Ken's strategy is, he goes into some groups, right? He's going to talk to this corporate group. Before he walks up there, what he does inside of his head is he imagines what these people are going to look like when he's done. In other words, well, in other words, if you walk into a lot of groups, what happens for the traditional speaker is they don't have a lot of belief in who they are or what they're capable of anyway. They don't have any intention, they don't have any power. And they walk up there already intended, and they walk out and they look at this audience. And audiences are rarely, although your audiences will be a bit different program than wired for you. But the standard audience is not wired. Right? The standard audience is waiting there very cautiously. They might, you know, clap politely or something like that. But that's 99% of the audiences are like that. They're waiting to see what you have to say, they're not impressed, they're not into it. In their own life, they don't have a lot of intensity. So what the hell are they going to do to give it to you? They're trying to conserve what they got. <laughs> so you walk up in the like that, and some of them may prejudge you by the way you look, by the way you dress, by what they've heard about you, or by the fact they don't want it to be in the room, depending upon where you're speaking. In those contexts, when you walk up and you say hello, and the room is dead, and there's no response, you have to learn how to take control. When I first started doing business seminars, you know, I used to want to do mind books, right, a couple years ago. I remember the first business seminar I did. I was used to, like, people come in, we have the music cranking, firewalk type of thing, right? I walk in there, and it is dead. I mean, absolutely, you can hear a pin drop. They're not even talking to each other. They're just sitting there waiting. Right? I finally come up there, and I go, good morning. <laughs> that's exactly the kind of reaction that I have, right? And I say, I know you're out there, I can hear you breathing. <laughs> I say, you know, are you live out there? Hello. And I mess with them a little bit, but it wasn't working. And then what happens? I thought, I'm not doing business groups. <laughs> I don't even talk to those 
jerks. <laughs> God, man, their lives are dead. So I, I had to work on my head and go, wait a second, they're probably the ones that needed the most, right? They're about the most clothes. So what I learned to do was start with me. Before I got in there, I realized I gotta have a belief that I can reach anybody. I've always believed that. Hey, here's a good test for it. I gotta believe that they really want to hear what I have to say. When I walk up, I do need to change my approach, which we're gonna talk about. But I have so much belief that what I have to share is so important to them. But now I can just walk up in that room, it's the change in me, it's a change up here. It's not a change in my movement necessarily, although I'm sure it translates there. But there's this, this absolute sense of pure power that they need to hear what I have to say. Not that I'm egotistical about it, but this is, they have to hear this thing, because if they don't, they're gonna get hurt. That's my belief. And if they do hear it, they can get some pleasure. And so I walk in with that absolute knowledge, and you cannot believe the congruency that gives you, and the flexibility. But you've gotta know that what you're sharing has value. If you get me up here and you ask me to talk about something that I don't think is important, I'm not gonna come across as an effective speaker. Even with all the skills that I can pull from. If you wanna see another awesome young Tony Robbins clip, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. All you have to do to persuade someone is do two simple things. One, you have to identify, and ideally, the first step you're going to do is you're going to identify the buying state. 